Okay, so I am giving medical exam paper another try. Welcome back, friends. So if you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton, and I am a gel printing enthusiast. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So I do a lot of that here on the channel as along with some collage. So I'm on the hunt for different kinds of paper because they discontinued selling, selling, I hope it's not totally discontinued, but I cannot find my favorite rice paper. So I'm still in the hunt for paper. And everybody keeps telling me, Ex medical exam paper haven't you tried medical exam paper so i bought it I, you get two rolls i think it's for like 16 dollars. so it's pretty inexpensive and it's smooth on one side a little bit rough on the other and i haven't tested it yet with collage but for printing it does a pretty good job so let's get to it so a few weeks ago i went to physical therapy and i Ask them to just give me a little bit of this medical exam paper and they did and it had a very irregular um, almost sort of pattern you know like it's translucent but you could see it's a little bit um, I don't even know how to describe this but it's it's got like um, a visual texture let's say that it's not a texture but it's a visual uh, texture the one that they had was it was really it kind of like big, more opaque chunks in it um, and less translucent overall. So I wasn't really happy. Also, it was really wide. This one that I ended up buying on Amazon is only 14 inches wide. So it's very manageable. And um, I don't want to have to cut each piece like, you know, var vertically and horizontally. I want to be able to um, just make a single cut. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this paper is that it is on a roll and I have to like think ahead and cut so many sheets and um, and just take that taking that time to do that. But anyway, so I thought I'd give it another try. I'm not going to give up. A lot of people are still saying this is great paper. I didn't have my a great experience last time. So let's give it another try. So I'm going to work with some stencils. I intentionally picked um, three patterns, a uh, really small pattern, a medium size, and then this other one that I guess is a little bolder. And then I have some masks. And that's what we're going to work with today. Okay, so I'm starting out with my um, Nova Color paint, and then I realized pretty quickly when I saw how fast it was drying that this was probably not a good test for this paper today. So, um, and you will see in a second, I don't, I don't pull a good print. The paint was already almost dry, and I got like a really bad print. So I didn't have any retarder. But I did have some glazing liquid, so I added some of that to my Nova Color paints, and I think it I think it worked. Anyway, I was trying to pick up the ghost, and as you can see, it was already dry that fast. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this ghost. Might as well start there, and I added the the glazing to this uh, Indian yellow, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite colors. And so now we should see how well this picks up. So I wasn't sure how long to leave it. So I'm, I'm a big fan of like using the um, temperature or let's say the moisture, like feeling the moisture with my hands as, a, as an indication of when I should pull. And normally with like some rice papers, I pull, let's say two minutes. Um, this one I wanted to see if it's similar to Delhi, and so I pulled it pretty quickly. I did not wait two minutes and it did a really good pull. I wasn't too, I was a little bit sloppy with the the wrinkles so 
I will say when you're using this really thin paper, you do have to be very, very careful when you're laying the paper down. But the wrinkles can also leave some interesting marks. So this is a mixture of quinacridone red and I think Hansa yellow. No, cadmium yellow, excuse me. It's a little swirling to um, mix the colors really well. And now I'm going over that same print. So I'm going to test a couple of ways today. So this is like one layer at a time over, you know, just overlapping. And I'm not really, you know, I want to see also if I do multiple layers with a single pull, you know, how well this paper do for that. And I wanted to also see when I leave some ghost on, on the plate, how well does it pick up the ghost? Now I hadn't added the, um, glazing liquid to the quinacridone red and I could see that it dried very quickly and I don't think I picked up a good ghost. So I'm just taking the time to add a little bit to my paint right now just to extend the dry time just a tiny little bit. And surprise, I did manage to get a decent pick up on that. Um, did lose a little bit over there on the right, but we're going to just keep going on. And I'm probably going to add another layer to that print. So the idea here was to have a very thin layer of titanium white that you could almost see through. And I made the mistake of thinking it was too see-through, added some more white paint, really, really made a mess. And of course, now I have too much white paint. You can see it's, it's no longer transparent. So I wasn't very happy with it because I felt that it was too heavy handed with the white. And I'm going to just use my deli paper to clean up so I get a clean ghost. But I do have a beautiful ghost, I will say. So now I'm using, this is the exam paper again. And this ghost is still pretty, um, pretty wet because it was the golden paint, not the Nova color. And I did pick up all of that red that was in there as well. So there's, there's that print. So I think it would have been better if, if the white had been more translucent. So keep that in mind when you're creating your prints. If you really, even though you're using an opaque color like titanium white, if you really brayer it on very, very thin, it can still be translucent. And you can, you know, plan that even with like a teal or, or one of those kind of very opaque colors. So here I'm starting with a Payne's Gray, and we're going to use the mask this time. And I'm going to pick this up with deli paper because I want a really clean pull on the background. I'm going to leave the ghost. So the deli paper I use really picks up a lot of the paint, and it does it quickly. So. I'm finding with this exam paper, it still doesn't do a, quite as good a job as the deli paper does. But the end result is different than when you have the deli paper. So it, it, there's still a, a use, I think, for this paper. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm waiting for this ghost to dry. And it did dry pretty quickly. And I'm, I'm shaking up my quinacridone red because I did add that um, glazing liquid to it and I want to make sure it's really fully incorporated. So now that my ghost is dry, I'm adding my quinacridone red. Now this is going to be a multiple layer. 
with a single pull. And we are going to lose a little bit of that ghost. It's going to get picked up and I'm going to use this deli paper to do that. Might as well overlay uh, more than one paper. So within those circles, it's going to pick up some of that um, paint that's with, you know, within the ghost that we had there. And so I, I'm just picking up again, just try and clean up um, within those circles. I want to try to get as much of that paint off as I can. So again, we have another ghost, but now you see how it was, I call this the subtractive method. So the um, mask imprint that we had that was a ghost is now missing some parts because it's kind of almost like Swiss cheese. So again, we had to wait for that layer to dry now. And now we're going to pick this up with, or we're going to add another layer. We'll see, we'll see if we're picking this up or not. I don't know. But this is an Indian yellow. No, I'm adding another stencil. So we are going to pick up again from within and subtract again. So a lot of times when I'm doing these uh, multiple layers with a single pull, I like to do this, this, you know, using different stencils and getting more than one subtraction happening and you get some some interesting things sometimes and sometimes you just make a mess but the whole point here is we're testing paper to see how well it pulls so of course this one is a deli paper but I love how we got some interesting things that we pulled from from this plate and now we're waiting for that to dry and I'm going to pick this up with like a, this is kind of like a Titan buff. I, um, I mixed it up this morning with, uh, different kinds of Nova color. And now I just added a little bit of glazing liquid to it. And just to, you know, retard the drying time a little bit. And this is very opaque and I think it'll be a, a great pickup color. And we're going to pick this up wet. So I'm still not sure about drying time and everything, but I'm going to try two minutes like I do with the rice paper. I'm going to keep testing it with my hand and see if it feels dry and also get to know what that feels like. What does it feel like to the hand when the paint is still wet? What does it feel like when it's dry? With each paper, it's going to be slightly different because of the thickness of the paper. Now, this paper is very thin, so it's going to feel very wet in the beginning. And then I noticed that right around that two-minute mark, I could really tell it was dry. It, was, it felt very different. So pay attention to that when you're printing. Okay, here we are at that two-minute point. The edges did start to tear a little bit. But only in one little spot. So I don't love this print, but I, at least I know now that this paper can stand up to what was that four layers of paint and look at how different these two prints are and these were you know sort of tag teaming you know the deli paper was picking up those in-betweens and I just love some of that stuff that's going on where the mask was okay so on this new print I am going to start with a solid background so we have this um, nice green that I had mixed up I don't know a couple months ago I have very little left in the in the bottle, so I had to really squeeze. And I'm mixing a little bit of, I think, uh, cadmium yellow with it.
and we're just going to wait two minutes. Now that I know that two minutes is like a good, a good amount of time. Of course, before I pull, I'm still going to feel it for, for coolness and moisture, but um, about two minutes. So we had some grunge around the edges and look at how it picked up. It picked up a lot of that grunge. I love those subtle little edges. Well, they're not that subtle. Okay, so that's layer one. So I also find that once I have a layer of paint on the paper, I don't need to wait two minutes for each of those other layers. They seem to pick up better when there's already paint. So paint picks up paint better um, than just the paper. So you'll, you'll see there, I did not wait two minutes. And I got a pretty clean pull there. And now we have a ghost. So I'm going to work on two papers at the same time. Kind of in the same color family. So I'm, this is the yellow green. and a, f a fresh piece of paper. And this time I'm gonna wait two minutes. My plate just keeps getting cleaner and, gl and cleaner. So I'm very happy. The paper is pulling up really well. I'm, think I'm thinking I'm getting the hang of this. And this is definitely better than my previous experience with the medical exam paper, that, that paper just did not give me these results. I will put a link in the description below uh, telling you exactly which one I purchased because there was definitely a difference. Okay, so my intuition has got me all over the place on this session. I had decided, I pulled out this other stencil that I purchased a long time ago. Um, I have and this one I made from uh, a stock photo thing that I had. And I'm going to go over that print that I was unhappy with. And we'll see if I make it any better or maybe I make it worse. But I was thinking I needed something to sort of quiet down those white dots. Yeah, well, it's still it's super busy. I don't think that was an improvement at all. But anyway, I'm trying to get like a cleaner ghost. It's a very pretty ghost. And I'm going to try to put that over this first print that I did. This is my third. I had the plain background, then the dots. Now I'm putting this ghost on top. And as you can see, yeah, too busy. And we didn't get the whole ghost, unfortunately. So I guess it's okay. But for me, I, I, I don't like super busy. So we have, you know, we left some on the plate. So if I use the Indian yellow those two colors kind of marry well together. So, um, I'm going to start with a fresh sheet. 
I will go back to that other print that I started to make. But, you know, when I'm just like doing a session sometimes, I, I let my intuition just take me everywhere. If I see something left on the plate, I think about how that could maybe make be the start of another print. is kind of interesting. Could be a good first layer. Thinking if that's the first layer, what you know, what would be nice on top of that? So I pulled out these masks. These are um, I think it's called Vertex Vibes. Um, this is the Titan Buff, my homemade Titan Buff. It's very opaque. Uh, I'm going to just try to lay that on top of that last print. Again, it might be too opaque. But, you know, my attitude is there's no bad print because a lot of times when I am pulling prints to put together a collage, uh, things that I think that I thought were like a total failure are like the perfect paper for what I was doing. So I, I no longer think anything is 100% bad because even that brayer sheet that I'm looking at right there, I am loving that. <laughs> So because I went over those stencils or masks with a brayer, the imprint from the stencil is on the brayer and it transferred to this, this uh, clean off sheet. So I'm definitely saving that because that could be a really interesting subtle paper. And I also love that other brayer sheet with the multiple colors. So I save the brayer sheets a lot and I use them a lot. So this time I waited a little bit more than two minutes, almost three minutes, because it still fe felt wet. But um, I got a really clean pull. Just that one little bottom piece was starting to pull, pull up. And that was like because of the grunge. The, as you see, I got a lot of grunge off that bottom part. So I love this color, this Titan Buff that I created, and it looks beautiful with that background color and with that very light texture on that, that was left on the plate from a previous pull. So I really love this print, and I'm trying to figure out what could I do over this? You know, what should I be using a mask? Like, what should I do on top of this? So I decided to pull out the rubber bands And I'm just going to use white and a touch of that, I think it's a ultramarine blue or no, cerulean blue. So I made this really pretty pale, pale blue. And I'm trying to be very random with the rubber bands. And it's kind of like a mask. Because they're like very three-dimensional, I can't really get, you know, I can get in there because the paper's nice and thin, but you'll see. It still has a, a way of making a very organic, unexpected mask. I love that lower left-hand corner. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. And of course, now I have a ghost. So I'm going to stay within the same color family, I guess. And we're going to use a little bit of that green again, that yellow-green.
and I'm going to mix it a little with cad yellow. So at the time I was doing this, I wasn't really sure if that powder blue was going to look good with this. And it, and it is kind of like uh, not very contrasty, like the values are almost uh, too similar. But it still ended up being one of my favorite prints from this session. And I'm going to use masks with this one. So again, I waited two minutes for it to dry. So see what I mean about it not being very contrasty, but look at how beautiful it is. But I'm not going to leave it alone. I'm going to put something on top of it. So this is the, I think, cerulean blue. I have a little bit of the green still on my brayer, so I'm, I'm mixing it in. And we're just going to go right over that. And you'll see this pattern through the mask. And this blue is pretty opaque. Again, it's Nova color. I think I might have mixed a little bit of white with the cerulean blue. And that's how I got that. Or it might have even been, I'm not even sure. It might have been the green blue. You can see through it a little bit. but I love it. Okay, so again, we have a, a ghost. So I keep thinking this is my last print, but then I have another ghost. So I just keep going. This is like, you know, this obsession that uh, that is jelly printing. You cannot stop because there's always something left on the plate that you need at least one more print. You keep saying one more print. Okay, so this is some green gold. This is Golden's Green Gold on the right. I'm going to put a Hansy Yellow on the left. You can see that green gold is almost, it's beautifully transparent the same way Indian Yellow is. And I'm using this homemade cardboard stamp which has seen better days. I need to redo it. It's not picking up as well as it used to. Okay, so once that dried, I'm now going to pick this up with this is a blue green mixed with some white. It's kind of like a teal. getting better at, at the wrinkles. So again, we have to wait two minutes. Okay, so we are pulling at the two minute mark. I started to rip, so I started pulling from the other side. Now this is the kind of stuff that never, oh, I can't say never happened with the rice paper, but it happened fewer times, put it that way. Um, at least ripping from the edges. In this case, it actually like ripped, the, the paper didn't rip, but the paint actually stayed on the plate and is like stuck. So I will probably try to pick that up on a later print. So this is um, black, carbon black. And I don't know why it's lacing, but it is. I did not add the glazing medium to this. So 
So remember, I still have that big blob of paint on, on the plate. So let's see what happens. It's still there. And now I'm going to just try to pick up this uh, ghost with my deli paper because the deli paper will pick up everything, but it may not pick up that blob. So I'm also noticing I just wanted some nice translucent papers with the black dots. So the black paint was too dry. So I decide I'm just going to clean my plate. So this is the uh, Titan Buff that I made and it's smearing. It's becoming some gray mess, but I'm sure it'll be a great collage paper. So I'm not worried about it, but I am going to leave this for probably five minutes so that I can really clean the plate. And I'm using a rice paper. So see how we've got like a gray background and look, most of that green paint came up. All right. I'm going to try this again, but with Soho and this is ivory black. The other one was carbon black. And this is a creamier paint. It, it doesn't dry as fast. I want some nice translucent papers with lots of contrast and a really good print. So with this p particular stencil, because I want to test the transparency of the um, exam paper in collage. And I want to compare it. See, that was like a really bad print. I want to compare it to the deli paper and see which one I like best pretty sure I'm going to like the deli paper, but I still want to see if I do have a print, how translucent will it go? So I got a much better print this time. Nice solid blacks. So let's compare. Say what I mean? How much more solid those blacks are. But anyway, now we have a ghost again, <laughs> one more print. Anyway, I decided to just pick up the ghost with the deli paper. And so, as you can see, I got a pretty good ghost with the deli paper. Okay, so here's a review of the papers. This was a ghost. I'm, I, this is on deli paper, so I could use either side. And it was actually uh, the red that was on there was actually picking up what was left on the plate from this particular paper. Now this is also a deli paper where I was picking up the in-between as I was making this paper on the left, which is on the medical exam paper. So you can see we get two very different kinds of papers, but I love both of them. This one I don't love so much. <laughs> just I, I got a little carried away. It's just too many layers. I think it's five layers on that one very, very busy. I kept trying to make it better. Um, this one's also busy, but I don't hate it so much. Uh, this one, I, I really love this one. I love the um, simplicity of the blue, the light blue. I also like this. Um, both of those papers are going to make great collage paper. You know, once I cut them up or just use a, a piece. Same thing here. I love the, the very light blue and the vibrant yellow green. And this was kind of like a dud, like we lost some paint, some paint on the plate, but I still like the print. So, and then of course we have to have some blacks. So paint makes all the difference. The one on the right was the Nova color and I did not get a really clean pickup. I switched to Amsterdam and I got much better. And paint left on the plate. Look, I picked it up with some rice paper. Left it a long time on the plate and it worked. So here's my favorite ones. From this session, these are my two favorites. 
but I ended up loving almost all of the papers, especially the ones that were sort of more in the green um, blue, and the blue family. I ended up using them so quickly that when I wanted to re reshoot this like little section here where I'm showing you the papers, I realized I used them already. That's how much I loved it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this session. Don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a behind the scenes as I'm working on my painting. Okay, so thank you for those who stayed to the end. I wanted to give you a quick update on what's happening with this painting. Let's see if we can pull out so you can see the whole thing. Um, it is, I think, a 36 by 36. And I finally got like most of her, her chin is really starting to come forward. I still have a lot of pieces that are still needed. The pieces are getting smaller as I go along so that they take longer. The fingers are starting to take some shape. Um, I recently did the dark areas around the fingernails, which really give that some definition. I still, this is a, a mess. I'm going to be fixing that, but um, I have to build layers to kind of indicate the shadow. So as you can see, it comes along slowly, very, very slowly. I've been concentrating this week on this arm over here, hoping that I can get it finished, but I still didn't make enough progress, at least not to make me happy. Um, this side is doing pretty good. I have a couple of spots that I have to fill. And then the word believe has to be repainted once I get all of this finished then I will tackle that. And of course the fingers are still, they're coming along slowly. I've been taking my time with this because it can be, it's just really confusing where, you know, what shade of gray I'm supposed to be doing and where, and I don't want to make any mistakes. So I've been taking my time. This area here, it's a little more obvious, so I should have I should have tackled that and I should have gotten it done, but it didn't happen. I had other things I had to do as well while I'm here. Yeah, so this is this is coming along and it is almost finished. And uh, a few more weeks and I'll probably have it finished. I don't get to work with, on this as much as I would like because I have to shoot videos, edit videos, <laughs> all of the above. But um, it's coming together. It's coming together. Thank you for watching. Here's another video that you might enjoy.